big size advantage for Kansas State as we tip it up here in Manhattan, Kansas. And the Wildcats in their white jerseys with purple trim will have the first possession of the game. Call it the, the former athlete in me or whatever, but I love long guards. Mm. It doesn't have to be about their speed and quickness, but I love their length. Reason being, being able to get out and pass it in and also being able to take a smaller guard and post her up and score. And that's what they do. Serena Sendell with the first basket of the game, posting up keys inside. Now they go to the freshman, Williams, who is blocked and... Welcome to Aoka Lee and the Big 12, Sahara Williams. So if, if I'm Oklahoma, and especially when you look at their length, with Aoka Lee guarding Williams on the block, Williams' advantage is going to have to be use her speed and quickness, step away from the basket, and try to pull Aoka Lee away from the paint. Starting lineups for Kansas State, the familiar group, Briley and Jalen Glenn, the twins, and Sundell started with Aoka Lee as freshman. Then last year, Lee was out with the surgery. Gregory came over from Oklahoma, and now those freshmen are now juniors around Aoka Lee. Oklahoma with the ball. Lexi Keys, the transfer out top from Oklahoma State. We heard Jenny Baranchek over to our right saying, shoot the ball, Lexi. She hasn't been shooting well, but she's a great three-point shooter in her career. You know, Coach Mitch talked to us about it as well when we talked to him this morning. Is You know, offensively, they can score the basketball, but they really wanted to focus on their defense. Nevaeh is hot with an ankle. So I'm just saying hello to Helen. Aoka Lee misses her first shot through a double team. And Oklahoma is pushing in transition. Van defended by Lee. Out to Tot. Tot hits a three. Offensively, they score 25% of their points in transition. So they need to get out, push the ball in transition, and just be ready to shoot as Tot did on that possession. Refs just kind of look at you and say, you get the bad end of it sometimes. But what I do love is how Oklahoma, they have just decided they're going to make someone else beat them, and it's not going to be Aoka a, a Lee in the paint. Up top, yeah. that's Peyton Verholst, and this is a good start. She can do so many things with the basketball. Kansas State starting 0 for 5 from three-point range as Taryn sides into the game, misses the three. And a nice pass dumped down to Skyler Van. Mm. If, you're, if you're a coach, if you're Jenny Baranchek right now, you couldn't have drawn it up any better than that. And we talked to her before the game, and she knew they have not been playing and shooting their best. And we asked her what their advantage is in this game. She basically said, nobody expects us to win. Well, and, and when you walk into the arena and you see a band, I, I guarantee you every single player on Oklahoma, they know it's there, they pay attention to it, and they're using that as confidence to say, you're not going to do that to us again tonight. That one gets away from Culleton. So they knew they were losing those players, but then at the beginning of the year, they had the disappointing news that Liz Scott, their 6'2 center, was out for the season. So they basically lost four starters from last year and are reloading. And out of the timeout, Gabby Gregory. What you love as a coach when there's a, a timeout and you drop a play and the team comes out and executes it. Makes you, look, you makes you look like you're pretty good at your job, huh? <laughs> great execution and, and great competitiveness for Gabby Gregory, too, right? Oh, yeah, no doubt. Out top, Gabby Gregory hits the first three-pointer of the game for Case and how they want to defend Gregory as well. Skylar Van Short, and that's Beatrice Culleton with the rebound. Raina Scott is number two into the game, the 5'10 sophomore. And then Tucker on the floor for it. Culleton has a straight look at the basket and scores. And right now, Oklahoma, they have an opportunity to continue to attack the basket. Without Aoka Lee's presence in the paint, they should be going to the hole every possession if they can. But as you said, Jenny did remind us that she let her players know more times than not what Aoka Lee has done to them.
as a player, when you're getting double team and you know where it's coming from, you're able to adjust. But the double team and triple team, is, it's kind of like if you feel like doubling or tripling, you go. No, you go. And finally, Aoka Lee gets her first that she took out with that knee surgery. So it's her sixth year of college, but just her fourth year of eligibility. So you're saying she could come back another year. She could come back another year. That's right. And that one gets away. It's Kansas State ball. So well, so far. It's like Oklahoma, off, Oklahoma offense, or defense, excuse me, very active. And if you're Oklahoma, that's what you don't want to do is get so caught up in knowing that you're going to go double or triple Aoka Lee that you forget about every other player because they do have other players that's very capable of scoring the basketball. That's a great point. Six seconds to go in the first quarter. Walker gets a hand on it. Step through. Off the rebound and ties it up. Listen, I, I just... I love the game, to be able to continue to be around it, a part of it, watching this action. Like, how can you not love it? Gabby Gregory with the three. Gotta love that. And Gabby Gregory says, I love it too, Swoops. <laughs> of course, Cheryl Swoops played at Texas Tech. It was before the formation of the Big 12 Conference. Southwest Conference back in the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, and you want to be that team if you're K-State to say, we beat Oklahoma, we beat Texas the last time we played them in the Big 12. Three seconds on the shot clock. Walker puts it up. Nice recognition. Vayatat refusing the screen. Blocked by Lee. Sahara Williams picked up the foul. Sundell looking for the roll from Lee, but she got caught up. And Sundell just decided, what a run here for Kansas State. As they have outscored Oklahoma 7 to nothing here in the second quarter. Williams. Nice okay. work off the window. Great attack. Kansas State outscoring this Oklahoma team. Actually, Oklahoma started ahead 10 to 2, but since then it's 20 to 7. Make that 23 to 7 for Kansas State. So, so two things to me. Oklahoma, they came in right from the beginning saying, you're not going to do to us what you did two years ago. But they got away from what they were doing in the beginning. Moving the basketball, sharing the basketball. She is listed as 5'3", and she plays way bigger than that with Absolutely her heart. Absolutely she does. Already with eight points. Oh, nice nice. dish. Cullich loses all the rim to get it in. Love that. They're best when they can get out in transition. When you have Tot in the game, she's pushing. She's going to create something. She's going to score. She's going to find scorers, shooters. They need to get stops and continue to push the ball in transition. Because I don't remember Helen being that fast. <laughs> Is Helen could be wrong. I was going to say, she, she may be texting me, huh? <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Terrific player at Penn State and then for years in the WNBA. The free throw made there for Aoka Lee. But so far, Kansas State has held Lee to just three points. Well, to, to me, the two players for K-State that really got them going is Walker and Gregory. And how about and that <laughs> block? Not only did Lee block it, but she blocked it off Tot. Well, here's the thing. Again, we, we, we talked about Tot playing bigger than she is, but you got to know who's standing in the paint when you're going to attack the basket. And Lee may not be scoring the points, but she's making a difference on the defensive end. Three block shots. Lee, and Gabby Gregory drains another three-point. On the year, they're shooting about 32% from three-point range and make almost seven per game. Four for 14 today. Come on, Todd. What a day. You, Todd. Well, you know, you, you always look for that one player that's going to come in that's going to bring something different for the team and give them a little motivation and confidence. And Tot has done just that for OU. Quick turn from Lee. 
Williams decides to take it. No. And Lee with another rebound. Taryn Sides, just a freshman out of Phillipsburg, Kansas. Off to Glenn. Glenn sees an open lane. Well, I know we keep talking about Lee hasn't scored very many points. But she does so many different things. But she's in the paint, not only offensively, but defensively. Lee says, this is my house. She gets her fourth block shot, and it's a great point because there's so much attention being drawn to Lee right now. There's a lot available, but let's look at the defense again. First, Gregory. Yeah, Gregory, and then Lee, is. Just, she just has a knack for the ball. She's always going to be in help side. And to your point, Rakia Jackson, I am a fan. Mm. I love her game. And she, you know, she missed a big portion of non-conference play for Tennessee. And so to have her back, boy, she had a 27-point game the other night, and Tennessee needed all of it. Nice shot from Sundell from three. Great ball fake. Another turnover for Oklahoma. They're one for their last seven from the field. Gregory steps into a three. No, short on that one. Landry Allen, too strong. One of their last 10, Oklahoma, a scoring drought of over four minutes. Jalen Glenn hits the three, needing a score here before the half. Ooh, he's fly to the ground for OU if they can find a way to get a bucket here. Biggest lead of the game for Kansas State. Todd waiting for the screen. Two seconds. One. And this time Gabby Gregory gets. But I love the fact that she's she's just still playing basketball. She's finding her teammates, wide knocking down wide open shots, and defensively, she's still making a difference in this game. Oklahoma with the first possession of the third quarter. They are led by Tot. She's the only player in double figures. They really need to get Peyton Verhulst and Lexi. She's the leading scorer for this team, averaging almost 14 points a game. Yeah, and, and again, if, if Lee is defending Ben, Ben needs to bring her away from the paint. But right now, that Gregory on Ben, Ben needs to attack her in the paint. And she wasn't able to get that one to go over Lee. They could get the victory, and they have four already. Well, the first half, they absolutely did a very nice job of slowing down OU and getting, I don't know how many stops in a row they got, but they did a really nice job. That's a big <laughs> shot for Oklahoma from anywhere. Not close the last possession down. Two wide open threes. I'm not going to get a better look than that. And there she is. She kicks it out to Tot. Nope. Off the side of the backboard. Verholz tries to take it right at Lee. You take it in the paint, you know what's going to happen if Lee is in the game. Keys to Verholst, and she is fouled that time. Robin played for Duke. Her dad played for Rockhurst, and they are very active in the AAU community in Kansas City. And the second. And it's just motivation. Listen, this is a fly goat. If there is such thing. But you know what I love about it? So, in case people are wondering, so it's called gap because K-State's man-to-man defense is called gap defense. And I, I love it. It's competitive because you also do drills like that in practice. Right? So, I will say this. So, when, when USA Basketball in, in 1996 with, with Tara Vanderveer, we, we didn't call it gap or anything like that. But we had a thing where Tara was like, we got to get three stops in a row. Um, I, I love it because defensively it gives you momentum and it gets you excited about playing defense. And offensively, it just kind of crushes the offense if you're constantly saying, that's one, that's two, that's three. Mm -hmm. Then when you get three, you got to go, all right, let's get four. <laughs> I love it. I, and I love that you have that example that, that that's been a motivation, even back to the 96 Olympic team. But the way Jeff Mitty posed it to his team is they had this drill where they would try to get three stops in a row, and they really embraced yeah. it. They got excited about it. And so he said, 
to Serena Sundell, Gabby Gregory, and Aoka Lee. He said, okay, now come up with a reward so we can get excited about that. That's how this idea came about. The goat's kind of fun and silly, <laughs> and, you know, but it really motivates them. Yeah. And, and then they do drills like that in practice, right? So so you get competitive with, with each other in practice. Absolutely yep. love it. And they got another one. Is it that Oklahoma's not shooting the ball well, or is it K-State's defense? I, I would say probably K-State's defense because they do a really nice job of forcing you to take shots that you don't necessarily want to take. On the offensive end, 10 seconds on the shot clock for K-State. Walker. What move to the rim? You know, Walker, even in the first half, she does a nice job of just coming in in the clutch, knocking down shots. He's had that one. <laughs> right? <laughs> nice play inside to Sanchez on the inbound ball. Aubrey Jones has been a little quiet in this game. Just three points for the transfer from Iowa State. And that's a great shot for her. She hasn't gotten a lot of opportunities, and that's one thing she can do is knock down shots, but she just needs to see one go through. Sandell tries to split the defenders, but a good, good defense for Oklahoma. The pass up ahead, and a foul committed. Absolutely, and that's one thing that OU could use to their advantage, especially with Johnson is just getting out in transition, trying to get some easy buckets. That breaks... Another drought for Oklahoma. This time it was three minutes. And one-on-one -on -one lead. The interesting thing. I'm not sure if OU decided they're not going to double lead the second half or if they just forgot to go double her. But if they're going to defend her one-on-one, -on -one, she's going to be able to. She picked up her third foul he goes to the bench with seven points and six rebounds and five block shots so Oklahoma this is their opportunity to go into the paint without Lee there and they turn it over Oklahoma had three or four players around it Gabby Gregory no oh that could have been a Bad play for you. You don't get the rebound, and then you give up a three. Skyler Van going to work, and Van finally, and that's their first field goal in almost seven minutes, Cheryl. Wow. It, it goes back to the defense we talked about of K-State, just doing a really nice job of forcing you into taking bad shots and just missing a lot of shots. And right now, again, with Lee out of the game, I, I, I would love to see a little bit more attention to the Twin sister, Briley Glenn, grew up in Kansas City, Missouri, just down I-70. This is that free throw, but grew up playing AAU ball with Serena Sundell and all three of them here at K-State working together. Skyler Van. Gets the rebound, swoops it up off the backboard. I'm not sure why they're going to double Gregory on the back, though. And somehow Kansas State comes up with the offensive rebound. Glenn, no, Skyler Van, and Oklahoma has a chance for the last shot of the third quarter. Smart play by Top to pull it out, take the last shot before the fourth quarter. Back door to Verholz, puts it up, no. I remember I was there in Atlanta, and I remember just being so amazed by you and, and what you were able to do and that Ohio State couldn't stop you. You just continued to score, set that record with 47 points. I, I remember it like it was yesterday. My teammates did a really good job of getting me the ball, and I was like, all right, you want me to shoot it? I'll shoot it. <laughs> but Krista, and, and I've said this before, was one of the best, smartest point guards that I've ever played with. Just understanding the game and, and time and score and what to call. Even though Coach Sharp was calling a lot of stuff, Krista mm -hmm. was too. Just mm -hmm. such, a, such a special moment and special time. Ball screen from Lee. And nice job by Aubrey Jones stepping in the passing lane. She has it blocked. Williams gathers, scores it. It's an eight-point game. Get out in transition. Try to score some easy, quick buckets before K-State can set up their defense. 
Lee passing off to Walker. Good recovery from Williams. Walker takes her time and splashes that one home. Abby Gregory and Walker have been the biggest difference in this game offensively. And, and just attacking, right? Like not sitting there waiting on Lee to do just that. <laughs> the look she gave her. <laughs> well, and she finally was a double team. Yeah. She got it up quickly over a one on Kansas State already in double figures. Glenn and Gregory both with 11 and Sundell with 10. As we look over the other side, Oklahoma only has one player in double figures. That's Todd. And then Serena Sundell adding. These two teams have played newcomers so far in their first three games. So this is their first game against their traditional foes. It's an 18-game schedule, but these two teams, Cheryl, will play again, so it's it's a little bit random. Next year, teams leaving, new teams coming in. I, I don't know how you keep up with what teams are in what conference <laughs> nowadays. So Aoka Lee went to the bench because she picked up her fourth foul. Skylar Van is at the free throw line. She makes the second free throw. This Kansas State team only has one loss on the year. It's to the University of Iowa, but they also beat Iowa in Iowa City earlier this year, the second year in a row that the Wildcats beat the Hawkeyes. <laughs> I, it's the player in me, right? I'm like, ref, you got to let that one go. Let her have it. Let her have it. Serena Sundell to the free throw line. This will be her first free throw of the game. the second. Kansas State up 14. Lexi Keys and Sanchez there. Lexi Keys transferred from Oklahoma State and was such a terrific free throw that she could shoot the basketball. Um, you know, and, and sometimes it's, it's all about the system, right? Like the, the system you're in, the plays that, that, that are being called. And, and maybe it's just going to take that one game for her to get on, on, on fire. She can have Sanchez started her career at, at uh, Arizona and transferred the best teams in the country in scoring defense and field goal percentage. And this is an Oklahoma team that averages 79 points a game, and they've been held to just 44 so far, but they continue to scrap. Two times sixth player of the year the last two seasons in the Big 12. Now a starter, now a lot more on her shoulders with 10 in this game. And it just has continued to battle. You see her heart in this game. Oh, from the time the game started. And that, that's the thing. Get a, get a stop here. Four seconds on the shot clock. Not a lot going on for the Wildcat offense. So Sanchez rises up and then Serena Sundell gets a rebound and then Sindel tried to pull the ball away from her, right? That's why she, she failed. Yeah. It wasn't Todd doing anything but saying, oh, no, I want this ball. <laughs> Williams makes it a 10-point game. Veronchek's team has gotten this Oklahoma Sooners team back within 10. Aoka Lee is back on the court, didn't get a touch on that possession, and Oklahoma can make this a single-digit ball game, Cheryl. The three-pointer up, and it's a seven-point game. Three-pointer from Skylar Van. So Van, Van has found success going in the paint, finishing, drawing fouls with Lee out of the game. Lee comes back in the game. She pulls her out of the paint, and because her confidence is up, is able to knock down a three. The double team comes. Lee pushes it out, and then a foul on the drive. No doubt. So you see Aoka Lee is back in the game. She's got four fouls. On the other side, number 32, Sahara Williams, has four fouls that Oklahoma had as Gabby Gregory makes the first and the second. And, and, and I'd love to see what, what OU's going to do right now with Lee back in the game. And a foul call. Must have been with the body, huh? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think the fans are convinced. Mm -mm. Let's take another look. I didn't, I didn't see it. I mean, she does a nice job of getting by Walker. Mm. Walker does not touch her. 
<laughs> and Tot made both free throws. Well, you know, usually people say ball don't lie. Yeah. So I don't, it doesn't work on this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a seven-point game with 240 remaining. Neither of these teams have lost in Big 12 play yet. One of them will experience their first loss in conference play. There's Lee waiting for it. Oh. They're going to call it on defense. Boy, she led with her elbow. But the defense called for it on that one. Skylar Van. Completes the three-point play, and to take her out on defense, Sanchez going to come into the game. Backdoor oh. cut, and a nice step in by Sanchez. Great, great defense. Good backdoor, but better defense. And Verholz picks up the foul. She's two for two so far, Sundell, at the free throw line in the overtime loss in Norman. Oklahoma won both games last year when Aoka Lee was not in the lineup, but what a pass from Sanchez to set up Walker. Great offensive rebound off the free throw, finding Walker for a back door. Verholz trying to answer, Williams with the rebound, and she's fouled by Sanchez. That's the first foul on Sanchez, and Sahara Williams will go to the free throw line. Great offensive rebound by Sanchez, finding Walker, cutting back door. Nice pass. Those are two players that were playing for Kansas State last year and really add to their depth. Sanchez and Walker both come off the bench. You've, you've said a lot of good things about Walker today. Sanchez also has really contributed. Williams at the free throw line. She is going to be one of those players that's going to be really, really good. 10-point lead for the Wildcats. They go to Lee. Little step back. Before the double team can get there, she scores. 14 points now for Aoka Lee. And into the hands of Walker for the rebound, and Oklahoma commits the foul. She makes two. Oklahoma had closed to within seven in the game, but Kansas State has stretched the lead back out to 14. Verholz tries to flip it up, and Sundell with good defense. And Jenny Baranchek yells out, no fouls, get a stop. Lee inside, and she scores. It was a tough first half for Lee, double and triple team. She only had three points, but she has come back and now has 16 points in the game. Aoka Lee is a problem when she gets the ball on the block. The foul was on Skylar Van. And Lee will complete the three-point play, and she'll come out of the game with just under a minute to go. And it's not the 61 points that she had two years ago, but she came back strong in the second half but had a lot of help around her. Four players in double figures for Kansas State tonight. Good pass. And Oklahoma continues. I, I keep saying this. She is so good. Like, you have to double and triple team her. There's just no way you could guard her one-on-one. -on -one. 16 points in the second half for Lee. As she has 19 on the game. And another turnover for Oklahoma. And the Kansas State defense just too much for Oklahoma tonight. for Kansas State That's tonight, and they got the victory. Kansas, That's pretty impressive. 
Kansas State with the win tonight wins their 10th straight game of the year and move to 4-0 in conference play. Oklahoma drops to 3-1.